here are the assembly instructions for my home for the holiday gift box. The box itself is going to be resting on a piece of chipboard. A piece of chipboard is in the file, but it really doesn't need cutting because the chipboard itself is 11 by 11 and that's the size that I needed. And I painted the edges with silver paint. And then I have a piece of white cardstock. The score lines on this piece are to guide you to position your house properly on your base. So I'm just going to glue down this piece of cardstock on top of my piece of chipboard. All of the pieces for my house have a score line at the bottom. I've just folded down on the score line. And they also have score lines on the pieces themselves. And they're just to guide me to position my windows and my door. Now for my windows, I have two different sizes. Each window has a yellow base and then three identical layers for the window, which I'm gonna glue on top of one another just to give them a little bit of dimension. And they are gonna get adhered to the yellow piece. And then I have my shutter pieces. For each shutter, I have one solid piece and then my two shutter pieces. Again, two layers to make them a little bit thicker. And my windows are flanked by the shutters on each side. So I'm going to start by adhering all the windows to the bases of my box. So that I've glued down my windows, I'm going to work on my door. Now my door consists of three layers, solid layer, then the one with the thicker and then the thinner outlines. A little step to the door. I'm just going to glue those on to where I see the outline for it on my front piece. So each side piece has tabs on each side. I've just folded down on those tabs. I'm just going to add glue to the tab. And then I'm going to take my front piece, gluing it right up against that score line. This is my back piece. Be sure that you have your tabs on the bottom, gluing it to the tab right up against, just like so. My next side piece, again, I'm putting glue on that tab. That one leftover tab, I'm going to put glue on it, and I'm folding the other end over, screwing down the other end, and that forms my box. So I'm just grabbing my base piece again. So I have a full rectangle, and I have a middle rectangle that has score lines right here, and then I have a rectangle with little scored squares at the bottom. The top rectangle is where I'm going to adhere my box. It's just going to fit right over those lines. So I'm putting glue on the tab that's at the back of my little house and I'm positioning it so that it's exactly on that score line. And I'm just going in there with my bone folder and I'm spreading the glue on the tab that I've just glued down. If you don't have a bone folder, you can use a ruler or anything with a nice clean straight edge. I've just folded my house backwards so that I have access to these tabs. And I'm just going to put glue on the three remaining tabs. And then I'm going to bring my house forward again. Again, I'm looking for those score lines and making sure that my house is fitting exactly within the score lines that are on the base. And so that's the beginning of our house. So next I'm working on the rooftop pieces. So I've just taken some dew drops. It's the Platinum Planet, it's called. Just inking the edges of my rooftop pieces just to give them a little bit more depth and definition. I'm going to do that on the edges of all those pieces. So now I've inked the edges of all of my roof pieces, including the roof piece that's going to go at the front of the house. So these pieces are going to be glued like so. Each one gets smaller and smaller right to the center. Both sides are the same way, so I'm just going to glue that down. So now that I have glued down my layers, I'm just keeping this in reserve for later. This is my roof piece with the score in the center, and I've folded down on that score line. And then I have the largest of my roof piece, and I've inked around the edges. And then they just go in descending order like so. And I'm just going to glue them down to that back panel of my roof. And then I have the front pieces and they have the cutout for the little awning. They go in descending order as well. And then I have the top piece that is going to bridge the gap between the two. But I'm going to leave that off until the end when I've formed the roof. So I'm just going to glue this down. So this is the smaller roof that goes towards the front of the house. 
I fold it on on the score line, so the entire perimeter. I have my largest one that's going to fit right between the score line, the next piece, and then the smallest piece goes at the top like that. I'm just going to glue those down. So this is my roof piece, and this is a little cutout for the second story window. I've got my tabs on either side. I'm just putting glue on both tabs. And then I'm lifting up my piece, and I'm slipping that little triangular piece under it so that my tabs follow along the lines perfectly. I want my tabs to be exactly at the bottom down here and I want the top to fit exactly the tiles that you've put on. You want to make sure that the shingles clear the little peak. So now that I have that piece into position, I can put my little cap on the roof like so. So next I'm going to work on the struts for my roof. I have three rectangles with tabs on one end. I'm just folding down on the score lines. I'm going to put glue along the top and just glue the end to the top, making sure that my cut edge is against my score line. I'm going to just glue all three of these. I'm going to take one of my triangular pieces with the tabs on each side. So making sure that I have the seam at the top, I'm just gluing this flush against my triangular piece. So I'm just putting glue, folding my triangular piece over this triangular shape, making sure that the peaks are exactly flush with one another. And then I'm going to take another one of those triangular pieces and I'm just going to insert it the same way in one of the triangles. So I'm just putting glue on the top of those tabs, putting that down nice and flush with the top. I'm going to take another triangle, I'm putting glue on the tab and I'm putting it on the other end of that triangle like so. My first triangle, the center triangle, and now I'm going to do the last one. So I'm putting this cap on the end. I'm going to grab my ruler and I'm putting a little tick mark at the half inch on both sides. So at half an inch and at ten and a half inches. And I'm just putting glue all along the top of my triangle and then all the way down this top. And I'm going to place it right on that little tick mark right up against my rooftop and then laying that tab down. I want this tab as parallel to this side as you can get it. I'm going to glue the other piece in as well. And then I'm fitting in my last piece. Glue all down my tab and all over the surface of the top triangle, making sure that it's right on that score line and then it's within that little tick mark. I want this wall to be nice and straight. But when I close it, I have a little bit of overlap on these little tabs. I'm just going to snip them so they're just a little bit less visible. I'm not gonna snip them in the file because then you have to be very careful which piece you put where. So now I'm just putting glue all over. I'm just bringing up the second side of my roof and gluing it all in position. So now that my roof is assembled, I have that cap piece, which I'm going to glue on the top. So now we're going to assemble the structure for that smaller roof. I'm going to put one of the columns together. The longest section at one end and the tab at the other end, I'm just putting glue on the tab. Fold it flat like so, and then fold over the other end. And that creates my column. I've got the tabs at each end. I'm going to fit the tabs through this piece and then open the tabs again. So I'm going to put glue on the tabs that are at the bottom and fold these pieces over so that it forms a little base, like so. I'm going to do that for all four of them. I'm going to put glue on the tab that's on the shortest side. So I'm going to take this rectangle. I'm placing this so that it's right on the score line. It's on my rectangle. And I'm going to take my second one on the shortest side of my column, putting glue on that tab, and positioning it on the second set of score lines. And now I'm doing that for the third one. I'm just placing it within the score lines. And the last one right at the very end. So next I'm going to put glue on the tab, the underside of the each one of these tabs, gluing it down to that piece like so. I'm going to do that with all four of them. All right, so I have my roof piece. I'm just flipping it over and I want to just glue that strip right along that front score line. I'm just putting glue all along that strip. So next I'm just going to take care of those tabs that are at the end. Just putting a little bit of glue on the tab, putting it up against my pillar. So I'm putting glue on the back of these tabs and I've put glue all along these four panels that are on the back of my roof. I'm just going to slide my piece 
So I'm pressing down on my tabs on the inside of the house. So I'm just going along the tabs that are on the back here, I'm just pushing on those tabs to make sure that they adhere to the side of the house. Now I'm just putting glue on all the bases of my columns. I'm going to be using the score lines that are on your base as a bit of a guide. Okay, so you want to make sure the back edge of that octagon is even with the little square that's scored onto your base. You're going to do that for all four of them. So as I was getting out the pieces for my picket fence, I realized I'd forgotten to do the little lights that are on either side of the door. They're identical and they have little trim pieces that go on the top. In retrospect, I should have put this on before I put the roof on. I'd have better access, but it can still be done. I'm working on my picket fence. I'm using my Cricut scraper tool to help me find those score lines. This is cut out of Cricut white craft board, and I also have kind of a shimmery white paper to glue on in my little picket fence. Most of the markings that you need are on the mat. I'm just going to put glue on the back of these two tabs and then glue on the bottom of all of these tabs. I'm going to start by the corner. I have my guidelines on my mat. This tab goes on where the score line is for it. This tab is adhered right next to the post. Then we have these two that get adhered to the side of the house. We're going to do the exact same thing for the other side. And so here's my little gate. So I've just folded this one pillar forward a little bit. And then I'm just going to put glue all along and glue it to the pillar that's already there. Okay, so next we do a few little finishing touches. I've got my little handle here. I'm just sort of sliding them towards one another so that it creates a little bit of a loop like that. And then I have my little wreath. So to create my little wreath, I'm just putting glue on the back of one of them and adhering it to an identical piece. And this is just to make it a little bit thicker, a little sturdier. And then I'm just putting a little bit of double-sided tape on the back. Next, I'm going to release the backing for my double-sided tape. I have some red embroidery floss. I'm just going to adhere it to the double-sided tape at the back like so. And then I'm going to bring it in between two of those little scalloped circles. And then I'm going to bring it down so that it's just on the edge of that center hole. And then I'm going to bring it up to the next scallop and then bring it down and just follow along. So I'm just moving along by one scallop for the whole perimeter of my wreath. Press down a little bit as I go so that the double-sided tape is catching my embroidery floss and keeping it in place. I'm just going to put another piece of double-sided tape on the back and I'm just going to secure my end. Just snip that off and there's my little wreath and I'm just going to put a little bow at the bottom. I have some very thin, very small ribbon and a fork. I'm going to extend the end about three inches past the edge of my fork, wrap it over, but under the part of the ribbon that's coming from my spool. And then I'm going to bring it upwards, pass it through the tines that are in the center, bring it downwards through the two tines at the bottom. And then I'm going to tighten. I'm going to flip my fork over, and then I'm just going to tie a knot at the back. While I'm tightening it, what I'm trying to do is I just pull it downwards a little bit, so my knot's a little bit downwards, and then pop it off, and then I'm just snipping the ends at an angle, like so, and there's my little bow for the bottom. And I'm going to do that for all of my little wreaths. I'm going to glue my wreaths to the windows like so. 